so it really is pest central at the moment on the allotment and in the kitchen garden back at home so in this video i thought i'd just show you around the all the major sort of pest issues that we've got and what i'm doing about them and sometimes just not doing anything about them and just managing them or even ignoring them because you know it's just that kind of stage of the life cycle of the plants so let's have a look around and look at all the problems so pests and diseases here we go fortunately in the polytunnel we don't have any blight on the tomatoes we've got a few caterpillars here and there I'm not causing any problems so i'm completely ignoring them on the cucumbers though you notice the odd little holes in the leaves and these are caterpillars munching away and all i'm doing really on these i'm just taking the affected leaves off as i see a problem uh, there's load of foliage on these cucumbers and so they can easily weather the loss of the odd leaf and so i'm kind of ignoring that any problems I'm not spraying them, I'm not doing anything about them, but any little caterpillars that I see, I can't see any right now on there, but that's what's making those holes. I'm getting rid. I have some red spider mite on these cucumbers as well, and I immediately took all those leaves off, and uh, I don't seem to have had any recurrence, so that's all pretty good. I've got a few caterpillars, same sort of problem, on these french beans but really these french beans are coming out in a week's time so again i'm just not bothering about that as a problem right so now these are the brassicas i have sprayed these with the soil bacteria bt and if you're interested in that just take a look at my ebook uh, in the individual going guide section on growing brassicas and also the basic section of the book where i cover pests and diseases and you'll find out how to use bt where to get it from and all that sort of thing um, and again a little bit of caterpillar damage i am generally just squashing the caterpillars there is the offending caterpillar that is just there uh, when they're just kind of small quantities like this uh, if i see a whole leaf kind of covered with them i don't bother squashing them i just take the leaf off uh, there's plenty of foliage on these they don't need all these leaves um, just a few little problems like this uh, you know nothing really to worry about at the moment so I'm not worrying about it these are the storage beetroot and these have hardly got any problems at all there's no rust on these at the moment there's almost no problems with leaf beef, beet miner and these are later plants the earlier plants had loads of problems but to be honest they are the worst problems that you'll see in a minute the leeks have got rust and where i see a really bad leaf like this one i'm just taking the offended leaves off and there's another one there just getting rid of those offending leaves doing that about once a week seems to be keeping on top of it not worried about them brassicas in general just taking all of these old lower leaves off at the moment all these yellowing leaves all the activity is going on up here that's the only leaf really these plants need i'm harvesting about one leaf per plant per week and that is most of our brassica greens for the week um, we don't have very much kale at the moment and these leaves are just gorgeous sawfly has completely defoliated these gooseberries but we got a great harvest off them and experience tells me they'll just completely recover next year i'm going to try and do better with sawfly um, next year I'll probably water with the fruit and veg protection nematode, which I use for quite a few other things. That also works with sawfly. So this is a bed of colettes, a bustle sprout kale cross. Fantastic crop. But I've lost three of the plants in here to club root. 
first club route I've ever had. So that's definitely an issue that I'll be looking into managing next year. And no problems with the carrots at the moment. They're all free of carrot root fly. They're well protected under these nets. So hopefully we won't have a problem. The only problem I tend to have is a little bit of downy mildew on the leaves. And because these are the carrots we're gonna be eating in winter and spring, what I do in December is I take all the leaves off them. They regrow the leaves uh, later on, but all this big leaf mass, which would otherwise just become a big, horrible, like soggy mess with loads of slugs underneath it, all that is kind of cleared off, leaving a lovely clean bed and nice, small, new, vigorous leaves that regrow by February time. I had an unusual problem with some of my peppers, particularly these bell peppers, because of condensation dripping from the inside of this low tunnel when we had a really high few days of humidity. And as the water sort of dripped into these, it just caused them to rot. So I had a few rotten bell peppers, unfortunately, but these kind of long red Marconi, long yellow Ringo types, they're completely unaffected because they don't have that kind of big depression at the top where the water can gather like a bell pepper does. Of course, regular viewers will know that a lot of my onions went to seed. This bed is an example. And I've just left these in while I uh, enjoy looking at the seed, the flowers basically. But if we look carefully down here, you'll see that we've got beetroot in here. I've taken all the leaves off because these beetroot have been affected by rust. And when you take the leaves off like this, they regrow. And generally speaking, you don't have any rust. You just have really nice new foliage. Because we like to eat the beetroot foliage, that's a real bonus for us. And these are the beetroot we're going to be eating all the way through August and September. So it's worth taking the foliage off now, letting them regrow, and then having advantage of that nice, new, clean foliage. And the beetroot don't seem to mind. So we've done that on this bed as well, because again, that was covered in rust. You do have to make sure you clear the bed up really well, so there's no old foliage like this like lying around that's still got rust spores on it. Um, and then water them really well so that any spores are kind of washed off the beetroot. And here's an example of a bed where we've got lots of rust. So this is the next one to be cleared. Here's a lovely bed of lettuce. And here's a not so lovely bed of lettuce because all of these lettuce here have been decapitated by cutworms the most annoying pest so you can partly manage that by keeping the bed really well watered but that's really hard work at this time of year so i've watered in the fruit and veg protection nematode the kind of nematode that i'm using for so many different crops at the moment uh, and one packet covers about 40 square meters so that's about as much as i've got of lettuces carrots brassicas of all descriptions and those sorts of things so yeah it's really useful whether it works or not i don't know it's probably about 70 percent effective so uh, anyway we'll see how that goes but very annoying pest and back home it's been eating my little kale plants and uh, so i've lost about 50 percent of those fortunately i've got quite a few spares but anyway, that's cutworm, horrible little grub. Lives in the ground, can't see it. And uh, even at night when it comes out to feed, it's basically nibbling the stem of the plant. So it's quite difficult to see. Some little uh, kale plants in here. And a lot of my brassicas at this time of year, they suffer from not cabbage white so much, but a little moth. I think it's a, some a kind of little caterpillar called the looper I think little green caterpillar and you often find it on the stem 
of the plant just here and it's very difficult to see because it's green like the color of the stem that pale green color and really devastating to small little new plantings so you have to be really careful when you're putting in new plantings to make sure that you've squashed any that might be on there and squashed any of the eggs as well and here's an example you probably can't even see it can you see it there on that stem i'm just going to roll it off with my fingers just to prove that there is a little caterpillar there really sneaky now of course when they grow a bit they look like that really big because they've been munching away at the leaves but they just hide they're very sneaky very annoying these are some of the spare plants that i've got and yeah <laughs> there's another one oh, i've dropped it and another one so anyway i'm going to go through those without you having to watch me but uh, yeah really annoying now you can spray again with bt uh, to uh, to manage those plants and of course the other problem is cabbage root fly and we have lost two or three plants not a huge number but two or three plants to uh, cabbage root fly and you've got a few options with those uh, one is just to keep them the plants really well watered and that's sometimes works it sometimes pulls through and you can also again use the fruit and veg protection nematode so pretty versatile nematode that one but again it's probably not a hundred percent reliable but it helps <laughs> some of these just look at the state of them uh, this is what happens when you don't check your plants for a few days and because they're spares you know i wasn't that worried about them that's one of the reasons why i keep almost all of my seedlings in the conservatory at this time of year and i find i get a lot less problems in the conservatory than i do if i keep them for example in the polytunnel so there's the few that i just picked off another disease so we've got mildew on the courgettes this is a, another problem that I don't really generally worry so much about. I know some people will be spraying with milk and oil and things like that to try and manage it. I'm not so worried because there's a lot of really nice, good quality leaf here. That is more than enough for these plants. So I don't mind a bit of mildew on my plants. My allotment isn't show garden. Uh, and so it doesn't really matter that they look a little bit ugly at this time of year you can of course just cut the leaves off and throw them away if you want but uh, not so big a problem as i say i have enough problems to worry about without worrying about the ones that aren't really having an effect on the plant's ability to give us a harvest the final problem uh, that I'll talk about today is codling moth on the apples and if there's too many apples and I see one with codling moth like this then I will remove the apple but if it's on its own and is likely to actually come to maturity then I'll leave it on because you know you can just cut out the bad bit of the apple and the rest is perfectly good so uh, yeah i'll basically thin out apples with codling moth uh, infestation but i won't otherwise remove them so while i was walking around making this video i noticed a few caterpillar pests and we've got dry weather over the next few weeks so it's perfect time to spray with bt it's the evening and so whenever you're spraying with bt make sure you spray in the evening you don't spray just before the rain and you spray roughly every two weeks and try and do the underside of the leaves 
because that's where most caterpillars start their lives. And while you're doing it, kind of keep on the lookout for any really bad kind of infestations of cabbage aphid. And if you see any of those, I just take the whole leaf off. I don't really worry about trying to save it. There's plenty of leaf on these plants. And I only found one spot where there was a lot of cabbage aphid. And that was on the purple sprouting broccoli plants. So uh, yeah, I took those off. Now, BT isn't licensed in the UK for domestic, or, you know, home gardeners. So if you do use it, try to make sure that uh, you don't let any caterpillars that have uh, survived it grow to maturity and, you know, make baby caterpillars because, make baby butterflies rather, because obviously they will be resistant to it. So we're trying to stop resistance developing in the population. And the only way to buy it that I know of now is either to buy it from another country or to buy the uh, version of it that is branded as for, for box caterpillars. And it's the same BT as you use on brassicas, but uh, it's not licensed for use on brassicas, but it is licensed, continues to be licensed for use on box hedges. So I'll just put an example up so that you can find it on Amazon or eBay or wherever you do your shopping. And then the final pest is whitefly. And I don't really have, as you can see, a particularly bad whitefly problem this year. It was really bad last year. That's just often the way that it goes. Uh, this year, it's kind of manageable. There's a few about, but you know, it's not a big issue. And what else was I gonna say? Oh, what's my general strategy related to dealing with pests and disease is grow multiple varieties, multiple successions, and put them in multiple locations. And that's kind of the best strategy to make sure that something kind of always succeeds for you. Um, yeah, that's my, that's generally my approach. And obviously use nets <laughs> if you can, but don't rely on them because you often find that the pest is inside the blooming nets. So, <laughs> you know, got to keep an eye on things and uh, yeah, don't totally rely on nets. This is my last brassica bed. And when I looked at this, I didn't see any problems but uh, I could easily imagine that there's some of those little moths in here. We've got these little looper caterpillars on here. So let's just give them all a bit of a treatment. And BT works on pretty much all the caterpillars as well. So, you know, if you've got caterpillars on your lettuce, which I have as well, or you've got caterpillars on your chard, then uh, yeah, it's worth just giving those a little bit of a spray. And of course I've got some beet leaf miner there on some of this chard. Just, you know, if you've got just one leaf affected, just squash it or take the leaf off. It's just really about controlling the next generation of it. It's very hard to control the first generation, but 
if you remove the leaves and throw them away, then there won't be as many in the next generation. And that makes all the difference. And of course, the final thing are slugs and snails. And I'm just watching out for those at the moment. In September, I'll water with Nema slug, which is another nematode. You can see I rely quite heavily on nematodes to manage things. Uh, and I just do one application in September and one application in spring. And I find that's just enough to keep on top of the problem. So I hope you like this quick video. My name's Steve, this is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel, and I'll see you soon.